In this video, we're going to be talking about the bosses of Mass Destruction mod. In order to show you guys how cool it is, we're going on an adventure. So before I left, I had to grab my items. You know, the essentials. Then I swiftly left and made my way to the surface. And then I traveled very far. I ended up finding this large ice lake. And in the center was this large tower. So I mined inside and then went up to the top. And I found these skeletons that were here, along with the spawner. Then I quickly found out that there were these four pedestals, and I decided to place four soul stars in them. After I placed the fourth one, the Night Lich spawned. And then, I had to fight him. He used this fireball attack that did a lot of damage and destroyed the environment. So I had to quickly shoot and dodge as he shot. And then, as I did enough damage, he started to spawn some phantoms. Which wasn't as much of a problem for me early on. And then, he started charging up his fireball attack again. And all I could do was run. I did so much damage to him, but then the phantoms started catching up with me, and they started becoming a nuisance, so I had to take care of them. He was so low in health, and all it took was just a couple more shots. And then he was dead. Among all of the items that he dropped, I got several high-level enchanted books, along with six diamonds and two ancient anima. Then I began my trek far underground, and I found this deep, wide cave, and the second that I entered, the Void Blossom spawned. I did as much damage as I could, then I realized he started healing from the petals beside him, just like the Ender Dragon. He kept shooting these bombs that kept exploding and poisoning me, and netherite armor doesn't protect you from magic. I did as much damage as I could, but then the petals respawned, so I had to repeat the last step. Some of them even had cages this time. So I ran around and destroyed every petal that I could see, dodging as many of the poison bullets as I could. After I destroyed the last petal, it was time to do damage. And I quickly realized I was out of arrows. So I just had to go in with the sword. 
And then just like that, he was dead. He dropped a bunch of experience, which was really helpful considering that my armor had mending on it. And then I ran up and collected the items that he dropped. And I got void thorns and crystal fruit. Then, now that the void blossom is dead, I traveled far into the nether, and I found this structure deep within the lava. I nearly died from an ender pearl toss, but it all worked out. So I dug in. After carefully making my way down, I noticed this ominous structure within the center. When I'm all, I couldn't help myself. I broke the eye, and the nether gauntlet spawned. He used this laser that I was unable to block because I didn't have a shield, so all I could do was run and dodge. And he kept turning into like a closed fist position, charging in for a massive hit. And I quickly discovered from trying to do damage that the only place that I could hit was directly in the center of its eye. And then unexpectedly, he charged up and did this massive explosion attack that did a ton of damage. And then, surprising to me, he cast some spell that gave me blindness, and I was unable to see. Now at this point, he was so low in health. All well, it took was one hit. But I just couldn't do it. And the fire was becoming too much of a nuisance, so I made my way to the high ground. And then eventually, one of my arrows finally connected, and then other gauntlet was dead. It exploded into this netherrack structure that had some nether debris and a chest. Within that chest was a blazing eye. So now that the nether gauntlet was dead, I made my way far out into the end. And I found this structure way out in the end islands. On top of it lied this strange pedestal that looked eerily similar to that of an end portal frame. So, I did what anybody else would, and I placed an Eye of Ender into it. And then suddenly, the fourth boss sprung up. It was this obelisk made of obsidian. So I did as much damage as I possibly could before getting launched up into the air. Thanks to my water bucket, I was able to survive. And then I started to notice that it was drawing help from these totems, similar to that of the Void Blossom. So I ran around and destroyed all of the totems narrowly dodging the obelisk as he charged at me from above. And after all the pedestals were destroyed, I did as much damage as I could. Eventually, a shield formed around him, and I was repelled from attacking him. So then I had to destroy the pedestals again. After doing as much damage as I could in the next phase, I had to repeat.
He kept teleporting above me and doing this massive explosion attack. So now that all of the healing pillars were dead, I was able to kill him. In his place rose this massive obsidian tower. And so, I would climb my way to the top using my water bucket. And on top lied a shulker box, along with a ton of experience, which was great for my armor. Inside the shulker box was 64 obsidian, 64 purple blocks, some highly enchanted diamond helmets, four diamonds, and an obsidian heart. So now that I defeated all four bosses, I made my way back to the lab to see what I could do with the items. I found that with this combination, I was able to craft a table of elevation, which when placed down, I was able to fly within a certain radius. Then I found out that I could use the ancient anima that I found earlier and an obsidian heart to get a staff of suppression. Which is great for preventing mobs from spawning within a certain area, which is a good way of protecting my lab. Then I used an obsidian heart, a void thorn, and a stick, and I craft an earth dive spear. This allowed me to teleport between short areas through walls, and it was fun to mess around with for maybe like 10 seconds. Then I used a Void Thorn, an Ender Pearl, and an Ancient Anima, and crafted a Charge Ender Pearl, which could be used multiple times. And when I used it, I even got a little bit of a resistance buff. The only downside with using it is that it had a little bit of cooldown. So then finally, I used a Blazing Eye, 7 Obsidian, and an Obsidian Heart, and crafted a Blast Amplifier, which is a great way of making TNT and other types of explosions more powerful. And with that, that's the end of the video. I really enjoyed putting this together and this was a lot of fun to make. So make sure to like the video and subscribe as it really helps me out. And the 200 subscriber special is coming in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.